In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to use the brush and eraser tools. To follow along, go to Working Files, go to After Effects Projects, and open up 0902 Brush Eraser. I have the Paint Workspace here, but I've altered it slightly by adding effects and presets over here, because I'm going to deal with them a little bit later. Let's open up the white solid in the layer panel by double clicking on it. We're going to paint on this white solid. Remember, you do all your paint work inside the layer panel, and then you can watch the results over here if you've got multiple layers such that you can see through the first layer down to ones below. In this case, we have a white solid, so we won't see through it. But at any rate, this is the proper setup. We're going to use the brush tool, so just click on the brush tool here. And that displays the brush tool's characteristics over here in the paint and the brushes panel. So let's take a look at the brushes panel, and you can see various characteristics here. Just keep in mind that you can change all of these later inside the layer, so it's not so critical that you get these guys right at the get-go. But you probably want to get the diameter and the hardness right, just so you can see how it looks as you paint. So I'm going to show you how to do that with a keyboard shortcut. You don't have to use this guy to do it. Hover your cursor inside the layer panel, you see the circle there. That's the size of your brush relative to the panel. If you want to make it larger or smaller, just hold on the controller of the command key. Control and Windows, Command and Mac. Click on your mouse and drag left and right, or up and down, however, like that. That makes it larger or smaller. And now you can change the hardness, but it's kind of a trick to do that. You want to keep your finger on the mouse, but let your finger go off of the controller of the command key. And now move the mouse left or right, up or down, and that controls the hardness. Notice as you go in, the hardness goes down towards zero. As you pull it out like that, it gets toward 100% hardness. I'll just go like that for now. So there's my brush. Now I want to set the color and other characteristics. So I do that up here in the paint panel. We're interested in these three modes and the color. To set the color, just click on the color swatch. It's pretty simple. You just pick a color you want there and click OK. But these three guys are kind of interesting. The only one that is important to get right at the get-go is channels. The other two guys you can change later. So I'm going to go look at channels. What are these three things here? RGBA, RGB, and alpha. RGBA means that when you paint, you're painting on RGB, meaning some kind of opaque area or semi-opaque area here that has some kind of color in it, meaning white or black or any kind of color. A is alpha, so you can also paint in the alpha channel, the transparent channel. So wherever you paint, something's going to go down there, whether it's transparent or opaque. RGB means you paint only in areas that are not transparent. So if there's some transparency, let's say you've got a logo or something like that, only the area that's not transparent, like the logo, will get painted on, and the background, the transparent area, will not get painted on. As far as alpha goes, you can paint only on the alpha channel if you want. It's a little tricky. You can look up how to do this if you want to inside the help file. We're going to focus on these two guys here. As far as mode goes, that's the blending mode and how the paint will blend with whatever's below it, including another paint stroke. You can change this later, so that's not really important at this point to select that. And the duration, well, you'd think the duration is kind of important because it has these four things here, but in fact, constant really is your best bet, and I'll explain why in just a second. So let's start painting something. I'm going to go back and start painting here. I've got red selected here. The brush is kind of large. I'm going to hold on the control key and bring it down a bit like that. And I just want to paint something here. Well, the current time indicator is that's where the paint stroke will begin. And with constant, it'll last for the duration of the comp from that point forward. So let's say I started here by mistake when I really wanted to start at the beginning. I'll show you how you can remedy that later. So let's just draw something here. I'll just draw something like my name just to do that. There we go. And it shows up over here in the comp panel afterwards. Let's open up the layer here and see how that looks. Look at the paint. Look at the brush. And you can see there is the paint stroke right there, the brush stroke. It starts here and goes along like that. Now, I'm not stuck with it being there. I can just drag it out like this to the left, hover over there and get that double arrow and just pull it out to the left. So the fact that I started three seconds in is no big deal. I can adjust that later. So the whole thing about you know starting at a certain time and being critical about that, you can always make adjustments if you want to pull it later in, like just have the word appear later in the comp, that's fine. You can change that as well. It'll pop on later. However you want to do it, you can always adjust this later. And if you animate it, let's say I want to animate this word on. It's very simple to do that. Go down here to Stroke Options. Starting and End, it's called. That's how you can animate it on. The end is the end, the right-hand side there, basically, away from where the start point is. The anchor point is the start point. You can animate it on like so. If you want to animate it off, you can just roll the start value from 0 to 100 and have it animate off like that. And so it doesn't make any difference where that little stroke is here. You can animate it on or off anywhere along that line. So 
again, the timing of when you put it on is not so critical. But some people like the idea of this right on thing because they think that somehow it works differently than constant, but it doesn't. It works exactly the same way. I'm going to delete this thing by clicking on effects and deleting it, and we're going to start all over again. We'll switch to write on, and write on keeps track of the speed with which you write over the duration of this little comp. Now, this comp is 10 seconds long, but there's no way to see what the time is as you write. So you need to sort of count to yourself as you write. But I'll do something slow and fast. I'll go like this, like this. Then I'll speed it up fast, fast, and then slow down like that. And now if I play that back here, if I go along and play that back, it should play back at about the speed that I did it, you know, keeping track of where I was slowing down and speeding up. Now, now it's doing a RAM preview, so it's not totally real time, but I think you get a sense. You see how it's speeding up there at the end and kind of then slowing down again. And you're going, wow, it's pretty cool if you get to remember the speed that you drew things and the acceleration or deceleration. But in fact, when you write with constant, it works exactly the same way because it's not really tracking your speed. It's tracking the number of dots that you're laying down over time. So now that I've done that with write on, I'm going to go back to constant here. I'm going to delete this layer again by deleting the entire effects group there. And now I'm going to draw on again with varying speeds. I'll do something like hello, fast, and then slow like that. And now I've painted on using constant. I'll open this up again. And you can see that I've got it on there. Now it's just going to pop on. But if I animate it on, if I go down here to animate it on by clicking on the stroke options, and let's say we'll animate it on by the end. So I'll set the ending point to zero at the beginning here. Going at the end here and set the ending point to 100%. It'll animate on with those little bits of acceleration in there as well. We'll have to do a RAM preview again, but as it gets to the point where it goes fast, it goes fast, and it gets to the point where it goes slow, it goes slow. So the write on thing is really a waste of time. You can just use constant and get the same effect later if you just want to use some animation here on the start and end. So what about these other guys, single frame and custom? Single frame is kind of helpful if you want to put one paint stroke on per frame, which is a little tricky to do that, but you just, you know, draw a paint stroke, press the page down key, draw a paint stroke, page down key. But even if I put something on as a single frame, I'm going to go over here and do that by clicking away. I have single frame set over here, and click that on and do one brush stroke. It comes on as a single frame. If you go down here and take a look at it, you can barely tell that it's there. It's right here. I'll pull this out of the way a little bit. Press the plus key a couple of times so you can see it. There it is. But in fact, if I want to make it longer, I can drag it out again. So it's not like we're stuck with a single frame. We can make it any length we want. And this other thing about custom says that if you set custom, you can say how many frames long will the stroke be. So sometimes you might want to do a single frame or some collection of very brief things. And so maybe then it'll come in handy. Nevertheless, you can always count on constant as the, probably the fallback for any kind of painting that you do, any kind of brushwork that you do. All right, let me just draw one more thing on here. Then I want to show you one little effect. So I'm going to get rid of this by clicking on it. And I'm going to just put on a ribbon here. Let's see, I'm going to make my paintbrush a little bit wider here. I'm going to make something equivalent of a ribbon, just back and forth like that. It's kind of nice. And I'm going to change the roundness. I'm going to go over here and change the roundness after the fact, just to show you you can do that. Go down here a little bit farther, go to Stroke Options. Change the roundness by pulling this down a ways here. There we go. I'm going to pull it to the left here. It makes it look kind of flat, like a ribbon like that. And the hardness, let's check out the hardness here. Right now the hardness is at 70%. I'll take it to 100%. So you can see how you can change that after the fact. So the ribbon looks pretty cool, but wouldn't it look nice if it had a drop shadow? Well, I can add a drop shadow with an effect or a layer style. So we're going to use an effect this time. So I got my effects over here. I'm going to type in drop shadow. T-R-O-P, S-H, and there it is. Let's drop that here on this layer. I can do it right here inside the layer panel, over here in the comp panel, either way. Now I've dropped it on there. Now I need to adjust it over here using the drop shadow inside the effect controls panel. So I want to do that. So I want to make the distance a little bit farther, and so far nothing is happening. This is not really what I had in mind. What's going on here? Well, the thing is, I'm adding a drop shadow to a whole layer. I'm painting on a layer. I'm not painting something above the layer or instead of the layer, it's actually physically, if you want to call it that way, on the layer. So the way to get a drop shadow to show up here is to click on this thing called Paint on Transparent. Now you're inside the Effect Controls panel. That's the only feature you've got when you have paint here in the Effect Controls panel. If you look down here with your paint stroke, you'll see that right next to it, it says 
paint on transparent off. You can click here to turn it on. And now it's on transparent. If you look at the comp panel, it's showing you the layer below it. Here it's showing you the transparency behind it. I could turn on the background by switching off transparency. The background is gray. And there is our drop shadow for this ribbon. And now we can change the distance and other characteristics and the effect. It looks pretty cool. You can put this thing above the layer below it by switching on this paint on transparent thing. That's what that's all about. There is one little caveat I want to point out here. If you want to use the paint on transparent mode, then make sure you paint with the channels set to RGBA. If it's set just to RGB, when you switch on paint on transparent, your paint will disappear. All right, let's go down to that next layer. I'll close this guy up like that, turn off its eyeball. Go down to this bowls thing, or double click on that to open up the bowls. Let me get rid of this effect controls panel by clicking on that to spread things out again. I want to paint on these bowls. I click on the paint brush again on the brush tool. I've got my color there. I want to change the blue, let's say. Lighter there, got that blue. I want to paint on the bowl. So let me just paint on it. And I'm here to tell you that's kind of a blob of color, which is pretty ineffective. You really want to be able to see the bowl through the color. And this is where the blending mode comes in. Now I could have picked the blending mode in advance over here, which would have been fine. But we can do it after the fact. So let me open this up here. You see normal here, that's the blending mode for the layer. We want to have a blending mode just for the brush stroke. It's amazing. You can have a different blending mode for each brush stroke. Let me go over here to this paint. There's our brush and there's our blending mode drop down list there. Click on that and you can select from these blending modes. And if you've never worked with blending modes before, this is kind of confusing, but this allows you to blend this color with what's below it here. These guys tend to make things darker. These guys tend to make things lighter. And we're going to work with color. Now, if you want to find out more about these guys, you can go to the blending mode reference inside the After Effects help. But I'm going to pick color because it lets the illuminance of what's below it show through and use the color we applied on top of it. And that looks pretty good. That little line kind of looks bad there just because it's showing this stroke. But over here, you can see the finished product, which looks just fine, I think. So I want to add another paintbrush on top of that. So I'm going to go get a different color, switch over here to red, let's say, click on that. And I want to go here along the edge. But before I do that, I want to switch off this paintbrush. Otherwise, I'm going to replace the paintbrush. So I click away to deselect that paintbrush. So now I'm going to paint along the edge here like this. And I would rather not have it go over the lines like that. I'd rather fix it. So I'm going to use the eraser tool to fix that. I'm going to zoom in a bit on this and get a little tighter. So Control plus or Command plus to zoom in a bit. And I want to sort of clean along the edges here. I can't quite see the edges though. So I could switch the blending mode for this guy to color as well. And I can see where I painted and see what's behind there. And now I'm going to switch over to the eraser tool. Click on the eraser tool under paint and you see there are a couple of options there for erase. It says layer source and paint. It means if I erase this, I'm going to erase everything right down to the background, which is gray. I don't want to do that. I'll do control or command Z to undo that. Or I can go over here and erase paint only. Okay, that's fine, but I'm also going to erase the blue I did behind there, which you can barely tell I'm doing, but there you go. Now you can see that I'm erasing the blue. I don't want to do that in this case. So I'm going to go control or command Z a couple times there. What I want to do is I want to erase the last stroke, just that one, so I don't mess up the blue that I put down before here. I can just work with this stroke. And now if I go right along the edge here, I can try to make up for the fact that I painted outside the lines, right? Don't want to do that, do we? So now you can use the eraser tool to fix things like this. There you go. So that's how you use the eraser tool. Let me show you one more thing. Go down here one more notch here to the next layer, the tree. This tree is on transparency. If I click on transparency, you can see it's a tree on this transparent layer. I want to paint those leaves, maybe give them a fall color. So go over here back to the brush tool. Notice that right now I've got the, you know, it says paint. Notice right there the colors and that kind of stuff. That's for the eraser. Click on the brush tool again. Now we're back to its original settings. Switch over to something more like a fall, I guess. Click on that color. Okay. I want to paint the leaves now. So I can just paint the leaves like that, and yeah, obviously that's not good, right? Let's undo that by pressing Control or Command Z. We can change the blending mode here so we can see how it's going to work. So I'm going to go down the color for it as well. Let's see how that works as I paint it. Oh, much nicer, but you now we're going outside the lines here. So this is where this little setting over here, channels, comes in handy. Control or Command Z, 
I'm going to go down here, instead of RGBA, I'm going to go to RGB, where it paints only on areas that have some kind of color in them. Now it's going to paint only on the leaves and not on the background, which is nice. There we go. Won't paint the whole thing, but you get a sense of how that works, right? And if I want to, let's say, adjust the opacity a little bit after the fact, I can always go down here to the effects, paint. I'm kind of running out of room here, but we'll see if we can find this here on the stroke options. There's an opacity down here. I can change the opacity. There it is. Like that down if I want to. And what's also nice is that I can change the color. So if I want it to go from spring to fall, for example, I can animate this color. Not necessarily starting at yellow. I could start at green or something and then gradually have it go to orange and just show the change over time. So you can also paint the squirrel if you want to. Let me just uh, click on him and I'm going to switch to a darker brown, for example. Just kind of pull it down here to that. If I paint on the squirrel the same process, we're not really painting the tree because the tree is so dark already that when I use the color blending mode, it just affects the squirrel. And notice everything went away there. That's because I painted on an existing paint stroke and this replaced that paint stroke. That's one thing you need to kind of watch out for. If you have a paint stroke selected like that, if you paint on this, it'll replace whatever you just did. So that wraps up our little discussion on how to use the brush and the eraser tools.